Good morning. Welcome to Community Church. We are so glad you are here today. It is our joy because God is the joy of the world. So we're glad you're here this morning. Just want to give you a heads up. We've got our bulletin. Hopefully you grab that on the way in. If you're wondering what's going on, this is the place to look. It absolutely is filled with all the things we have to offer here. In addition to that, we have our Connect card. If you call Community Church your home, we want to partner with you in life and in prayer. And on the back, there's prayer requests. If you could fill those out, put it in the offering or drop them off to me or somebody else on the pastoral staff. We definitely want to partner with you in prayer. But more importantly, if you're new here today, on the front, we want you to fill this out. Because after service, I want you to come see myself or Pastor Dan at the table. We want to connect with you. We've got a small gift for you. And we need you to fill this out so we can get that to you. I just want to encourage you uh, to, to make that connection. Because that's one of the reasons I absolutely love this church. Because we have so many ways for you to connect at so many different levels, wherever you are in your journey. So this morning, will you please pray with me as we enter into worship? Father, we just bless your name. We thank you for all the great things you do for us and the great things you want to do for us. We thank you for your son and his birth and the season that we celebrated in. Father, Lord, that you would overwhelm us with your peace as we enter into your presence. In your name I pray. Amen. Conquers the grave. 
Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And worthy is the King you conquered the grave. Yeah. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And worthy is the King who conquered the grave. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Yes, you are. Worthy is the King you conquered the grave. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquers the king. And worthy is the Lamb who slain. Worthy, 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 Lord. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love, Lord. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. seek and say that which was lost. And even as a baby, Lord, your mission was straight, Lord, your mission was sure. You came with a purpose, Lord. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquers the grave, and worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And worthy is the King who conquers the grave. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain, oh Jesus. And worthy is the King who conquers the grave. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain. So worthy is the King who conquered the grave. God, you conquered the grave. Through death and hell, Lord God, oh, you conquered the grave. For me, Lord, for everyone here, Lord God, you conquered the grave. What are the king leaves his throne? 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 What are the king leaves his glory? What are the king leaves his glory? And what are the king leaves his glory? What are the king leaves his glory to die, his glory to die? What are the king leaves his throne? What are the king leaves his throne? What are the king leaves his glory to die, his glory to die? What are the king leaves his throne? What are Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, and worthy 
is the king. Lord, you conquered every demon, Lord. It's worthy is the lamb who was slain. And worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. And worthy is the king who conquered the grave. He's good, amen.
focus on you this morning. We set our sights on you, Jesus. focus on it's the most wonderful time of the year and we want it to be perfect and happy and fun but the reality for so many people is that it's such a reminder for what you've lost and what you don't have but through it all God is with us and through it all He's your friend. He's your comforter. He's your source. He is your strength. So this morning, whatever may be, whatever may come, I'm going to stand. I'm going to praise. Join me this morning as we praise. Come what may. Come what may. When peace like a river.
be it for me to not believe even when my eyes can't see and this mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea cause through it all through it all, my eyes are on you. And through it all, through it all, it is well. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And it is well. It is God's love for you abounds so much that it's greater than anything that you can comprehend. We fail to comprehend the depth of His love for us. And then in His majesty, in His creative wonder, He carves out parts of our lives and puts His fingerprint on them. So no matter how, how hard you run, no matter how far you go, no matter what happens, that he always has that peace in your life that he can touch. And I know that there are some people here this morning that he's been touching that spot in your life. This morning I want you to know that today is about God revealing his love toward you. No matter how hard you've ran, no matter what you've done, no matter what mistakes you've made, no matter the wrong that you've brought into your life, I'm telling you there's a spot that God designed in your heart that was his spot. And right now, he's putting his finger upon it. And I just want you to open yourself up to that love and let the love of God pour through you right now. Let him love you in spite of uh, maybe your unworthiness to it. We all stand here today unworthy of his love, but I'm telling you, there's some mountains this morning that are going to be moved. Heaven and earth will move for God to show his love. that you would know his love. Father, we stand here this morning in all of your goodness and your love and your mercy that you show us. And Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that every one of those spots in our hearts, every individual spot that you've designed that your fingerprint belongs, we open it up to be touched by you. And Father, we declare that this morning will be a morning of life. It'll be a morning of victory. It'll be a morning of celebration. It'll be a morning where we, we see your greatness and your love and your mercy. And Father, today we say thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you that your mercies are new every morning. No matter how far we go or how hard we run, you're there. And that goodness and faithfulness, we say thank you. This morning, will you lift up your voices to him and tell him thank you this morning. Thank you for loving you. Father, we just praise your name this morning. We thank you for your love and your goodness, for what you're doing in our lives. Rhonda Vercher came up earlier and said there was a word from God saying that, that if there's a, a, a place where the reports maybe from the doctors have been so bad, that hope is fading away. I don't know if someone's watching over the internet or someone's here this morning that needs to know that the doctors can lose hope. And doctors can run out of answers. But we serve not 
a physician, but the Bible calls the great physician. And he's the one that by the word of his mouth created everything that exists. That set the stars in place and told the bodies of water how far they could go. That God, until he says the final word, holds life in his hand. So if this morning you or someone that you love, someone you're aware of, has had a, a, a bad report that their health is in trouble. And I want you to know that today we're not contending uh, uh, we're not sick people contending for a healing. We're whole people fighting off sickness in the name of Jesus. We come from a position of His goodness. So if that's you, would you raise your hand this morning? If you're here and you stand in the gap for somebody or you've received a report, I just want someone, if someone's raised their hand, look around and put your hand on their shoulder. Don't let anybody that has their hand up stand there alone. And we're just going to declare God's goodness. Father, we thank you right now that your healing virtue, by the stripes that Jesus bore upon his back, we can declare healing. We can declare hope. We can declare victory in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that doctors are there and medicines there and hospitals are there. But Father, more than that, we thank you that you declare life over your kids. So we speak to sickness. We speak to cancer. We speak to diabetes. We speak to those things that ought not be. And we say, you don't belong in heaven. So you do not belong in the body of the righteous. We speak healing and life over those bodies. We pray strength over them right now. Father, your word says that we're to come together and bind up the wounded. We're to make strong the weak knees. And we stand them to their spiritual feet today. And we reach into heaven right now. And we anoint them with the goodness of Christ. The goodness of heaven over their bodies. And we speak wholeness to it. And we thank you, Father, that today, Dad, you're in a good mood. That today you've got good things on your mind. And today there's healing in your wings. We thank you that today there's an anointing in your in your touch and in the prayers of your saints and we begin to celebrate you this morning begin to thank him this morning for what he's done father we thank you we thank you for healing we thank you for touching people's lives and we give you glory and we thank you father we thank you Love never fails. You Thank you. Your love never, and your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. I know that your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Oh, and your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. time. 
Father, we thank you for your goodness. We stand before you today in all, all of your love, all of your ability to reach into the broken places in our lives and make them whole, to heal, to restore, that your kids are never without hope because of you. And we give you praise, honor, and glory this morning. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you can be seated this morning. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Yes. Thank you, Father. Well, this morning we have a lot of things we want to make you aware of and uh, exposure to. So uh, it's our time to uh, look at what God's been doing in our lives and prepare for the offering. Well, over the last year, we were able to launch a new ministry uh, to the uh, Hispanic community. And uh, Pastor uh, Guillermo uh, has came on. And Pastor Cohen, come up. Give Pastor a hand as he comes. You know, there's some things uh, uh, we've been praying about on staff for many uh, for a long time. Uh, we've been praying that God would send someone that had a true pastor's heart uh, onto our staff that was uh, just kind and nice. Don't say amen to that. Y'all want someone kind and nice somewhere on the staff. And Pastor Guillermo has got a true pastor's heart, and he has served well the Hispanic population, and he is serving our body well. And today we're going to have a, a kind of a joint service. He's going to be doing baptisms and other things. And uh, we want to welcome our Hispanic congregation into service this morning. So uh, we would like to welcome our Hispanic congregation. Hola, good morning. Good morning. How are you all doing today? En esta mañana quiero darles la bienvenida a nuestra iglesia hispana, que por primera vez están con nosotros en un servicio eh, unidos. Eh, ¿Cómo se sienten esta mañana? Bien, me imagino que bien, ¿verdad? Estamos muy contentos de que puedan estar aquí con nosotros y queremos que usted se sienta en casa. Esto es eh, eh, la casa de Dios y usted es parte de ello, del mover de Dios, de lo que Dios está haciendo aquí en este día. I didn't understand any of that, but that's okay. Okay, let's say it in English now. <laughs> no, I, I'm just thankful for what God's doing. And the reason we're here together is we want to do two things. One, it's time to take up the tithe and offering. And we want to make sure that the Hispanic service is taken care of. And so uh, we're going to take up one offering. But if you will write the Hispanic congregation, if you're here for the Hispanic service, on the envelope, if you do not have one, raise your hand. And the ushers will get you one. You write Hispanic service. That way we get the money to the right place. La razón por la que estamos aquí en esta hora es que eh, al ser dos congregaciones estamos trabajando con la comunidad hispana y tenemos nuestro servicio. Hoy es el único día que podemos levantar nuestras ofrendas y diezmos, así es que eh, usted como iglesia hispana puede pedir, levantar su mano y pedir un sobre y en su sobre ponga específicamente que es para la iglesia hispana o ministerio hispano, así lo sugiere, saben a dónde depositar esa ofrenda. ¿Qué les parece? Amen. Well, this morning we're gathering together because God's doing great things. We look around and in the last year we've been able to start a Hispanic service. In the next year to come, we're going to be doing some great things. You're going to see a video in a little while for Life University getting launched. Guys, I want you to know that God is in the middle of doing something great in our community. Within the next year, we're going to have a mission field next door that the Hispanic service and the English-speaking service will be able to reach into and bring the goodness of God into their lives. And I want you to be as excited as I am because I believe we have a real chance to get on the same page with what God's doing in our community and bring His goodness and His love to our neighbors. Can you say amen? Amen? All right. Estamos trabajando muy juntos. Uh, let, let's do something today. Let me ask my sister Maria. She wants to come here and be my interpreter. That way, you know, everybody gets something. What do you think? All about right. That? You know, I'm still working on my English. It's not perfect. I still struggle with it. Uh, Basically, oh, I came to the United States when I was 20, and uh, the first language I learned, it wasn't Spanish. I learned an a, a, a Indian language in, from the south of Mexico, what they call Zapotec. That was my first language till the age of six, when I started going to school. It's when I, when I learned uh, Spanish, so English is going to become my third <laughs> language, and it's not, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy, let me tell you that. Uh, muchas gracias a todos por haber estado aquí. Eh, lo que el pastor estaba diciendo era que empezamos el ministerio hispano 
el año pasado y estamos muy honrados de poder ser parte de lo que Dios está haciendo en Iglesia Comunidad. Hay mucho todavía que hay que hacer, pero la pasión que Dios puso en nosotros va mucho más allá de eso. En este año que tenemos en este lugar, Dios nos ha permitido ver vidas transformadas, matrimonios restaurados, personas que no tenían ningún tipo de esperanza, encuentren un propósito de vida. Amen. Y eso nos llena de satisfacción. Pero saben una cosa, nada de eso hubiera sido posible si la iglesia en sí no nos apoyara a poder lograr ese propósito. Como hispano, yo quiero darles gracias infinitamente porque yo puedo decir que yo soy el producto de lo que ustedes un día sembraron hace muchos años atrás ustedes enviaron a unos misioneros al sur de Oaxaca, México al sur de México yo no los conocí pero mis padres me decían de John y Jenny que fueron los misioneros que fueron a sembrar el evangelio en aquel lugar mis padres se convirtieron o vinieron a Cristo por ellos y a través de eso pude conocer yo también al Señor así es que eso es para celebrar y ahora Dios nos ha movido a esta región alguien me preguntó si mi misión es aquí para alcanzar a los uh, anglos y yo le dije que no ya está Pastor Daniel que está haciendo eso lo que Dios nos mandó es para alcanzar a tu vecino que es hispano que no habla español a tu compañero de trabajo o tal vez a tu trabajador a ese que con el que no te puedes comunicar a esos Dios nos mandó porque la única forma de cambiar al mundo es dejando que Dios transforme el corazón de los hombres y sabe una cosa Hoy en día ustedes todavía tienen la oportunidad de ayudarnos Llevándoles una invitación como esta Solamente déselos y dígale Hablen a ese teléfono Ahí va gente que, que, que les puede ayudar En una ocasión Jesús dice que tuvo, una, tuvo compasión cuando vio a la gente de esa, de esa. La gente perdida. Esa misma compasión debe haber en nosotros. Y saber que la única respuesta del mundo la tiene Jesús. se comprometen a ayudarnos a hacer eso amen, 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 amen. 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 amen gracias Dios gracias Jesús You know, our Hispanic brothers and sisters are teaching us a great deal about reclaiming family. 
One of the things that I wanted to do this coming year and praying about was community restoring the family dynamic of community church. And I believe a huge part of that is learning from our Hispanic brothers and sisters how to do family well. And so today I want to clarify when we take up the offering, it's community church's offering. We separate out the Hispanic service because our desire is at some point the Hispanic service is able to self-sustain Pastor Guillermo on staff. So we're wanting to track very well how it's going because one day I believe Pastor Guillermo is so valuable he doesn't need to be uh, employed elsewhere. And so that's the reason we're doing it, okay? It's not that there's two churches, there's one church. Uh, The issue is this, we want to as quickly as possible see Pastor Guillermo on staff. And so, uh, will you join me this morning as we prepare to take up the tithe and offering uh, in expanding what God is doing in our region and our community, reaching both the Anglo and the Hispanic and having a big umbrella here at Community Church that can be reached, uh, whether you're English-speaking, Spanish-speaking, or Southern Mexico Indian-speaking. Uh, we, we'll, we'll have you covered. Amen? Well, if you'll raise up your tithe and offering this morning, Pastor Guillermo, will you bless the tithe and offering for us this morning? Señor, mientras levantamos nuestras ofrendas y te la ofrecemos, queremos darte gracias porque sabemos que toda buena dádiva y todo don perfecto proviene de ti. Te bendecimos y te damos gracias porque mientras lo depositamos en tus manos, Sabemos que tú eres capaz de cuidar de tus hijos. Bendecimos a tu pueblo en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. As the offerings being taken up, I want to also introduce a video that's about to be played. Uh, last year, uh, at the annual uh, meeting and the end of the year, going into the end of the year, last December, I stood up and said in 2015, We want to launch a Life University. Well, 2015 is here, and many of you, it's right around the corner, many of you have been asking what's going on with Life University. Uh, We will be launching it in January, the very first quarter. I mean, the very first teaching section will be open to everyone to get an idea of what it is and uh, hear the vision for it. Uh, But there's a video I want you to see that will begin to answer some of those questions. Uh, Bill and Carol Lee will be uh, taking the lead on Life University. And we are excited. So if you'll turn your attention to the screen and see what God's doing. Amen. Amen. Well, let's give a hand for that. That's the fulfillment of what God's been talking to us about. Take those first steps. If you're interested, we'll make, you make plans to be there. Uh, the first class, there will be no cost to it as it's an uh, introduction. But after that, there will be a, a cost incurred. So we are excited. Also, if you're here for water baptism, you need to make your way out. Pa- follow Pastor Dan. He'll be going out the door to your right, my left. And uh, we're excited about those being baptized this morning. You know, baptism is not just about getting wet uh, at church. It's an ordinance of the church, which means it's something that Christ talked to us about and told us to do these things. 
But what we do is we not only represent the fact that we're dying and being raised up uh, together with him, alive in Christ. Uh, we do immersion because it's a picture of death, burial, and resurrection. But it's also, he said, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit so that you and I can live in a constant reality that we're never alone. We are completely inundated. Imagine, how wet are you when you're baptized? Are you a little bit wet or a whole lot wet? You're so wet, we have to throw, Dan will throw a towel at you, knock you down with a towel, try to keep, you've got more than enough liquid dripping off of you. That is the presence of God in our lives. He is so present, he is just kind of dripping off of us. We are inundated with the presence of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We ought to be excited about that. As we prepare for uh, baptism, though, we have a baby blessing, two babies this morning to be blessed. So, Mary Beth, will you join me up here? We have uh, the Ruffin family and the Jacobs family. We have two babies this morning. Uh, two little girls uh, joined us this morning. Uh, Anna Lee and Derricka joined us this morning. So if you'll uh, bring those babies up here. Everybody enjoys a good baby blessing because I get to watch Mary Beth and I wrestle over children. Yeah, it's fun. We like to... We like to hold other people's babies at this point in our lives. Wow. These are two families here. All right. Everybody says, oh, I want this one. Oh, Anna Lee. All right. And then we have another family coming this way. Y'all come over here. And that way we'll be kind of balanced. Because these people on this side get lonely sometimes. This one is who I have. Derricka. All right. Look at you. You can be happy, okay? Because don't make me look bad. Mary Beth has a happy face. Look at this. Look at that pretty dress. Can you say hi? Everybody say hi so she knows you're friendly. There you go. She wasn't sure. I know it's scary sometimes. <laughs> Get used to it, brother. Well, reach out your hands as we bless Derricka. Well, Derricka, we just want to speak a blessing over your life. That the Lord's love will always surround you. That it's not just there, you're aware of his love for you. That your identity is not solely in the mom and dad that you were, the home you were born into. But that your identity will be in whose you belong that you are a child of God, that you will be raised to have an, an identity and a destiny in his kingdom, that your heart will be tender towards him and your mind will be sharp to grab the concepts of the kingdom. Father, that you would declare over Derricka your love and your mercy and that she'll walk in your goodness every day of her life, that she will be a leader and not a follower and that she will be used to set a generation on a path to your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. You like that, huh? She smiled. All right. All right. Oh, there you go. That's awesome. Okay. He's 14? All right. Tell me. Later, I'm going to get everybody's age. Are you ready? You know how old everybody is? All right. Anna Lee. You're just going to keep them? Well, go show them. Let everybody see. All right. Well, how did she get a name like Anna Lee? Hmm. Shauna Lee. Well, lift up your hands toward Anna Lee. What a beautiful baby. God has done so good just blessing us with some beautiful children. No, not every church has beautiful children, but don't tell them I said that. We happen to. All right. Well, Father, we just want to declare over Anna Lee, that she'll be full of life and joy, that her identity is wrapped up in you and that she has a joy that just bubbles up inside of her uh, that causes other people to smile and know that she's entered the room. I pray, Father, over her life and declare over her life that she will command your presence, that she will be able to be in touch with your spirit at any mo po uh, moment in her life, that she's able to call upon heaven Father, that she has a tenderness toward you and others. And Father, I pray for a deep empathy in her. 
that she will see others who may have been rejected or left out, and she has a way of making them feel a part. And that, Father, she's just not a part of a, of a community or a groupie, but she makes them feel a part of your love and your destiny. Father, I speak over her wisdom, wisdom beyond her years, that very early her heart is captured by your love and this world can never turn it, and that she lives steadfastly for your kingdom. And Father, I thank you that she will have a capacity to love the unlovable and to reach the unreachable. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. She done ran out of her socks. All right. All right, give these moms and dads a hand as they endeavor on this journey. All right. All right, thank you guys. Okay, are we ready, Pastor Dan? The trees are talking to me, I don't know. I guess we didn't plant out that tree very well.
un honor poder traer esta familia y que tomen parte de esto que es tan importante. Detrás de cada familia que se bautiza hay una historia y no tenemos tiempo de conocerla, pero cuando vemos que llegan a, a llevarlo a cabo, vemos lo que Dios puede hacer. Por eso en esta hora, Natasha Negrón, por tu confesión a la fe en Jesucristo como Salvador, yo te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Ella tiene un apellido muy bonito, se apellida Espíritu Santo. Lilianey, Espíritu Santo, por tu confesión en fe en Jesucristo, te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Esto es toda una cosecha. Gabriel ha sido una bendición. Y poder traerlo a las aguas baptismales es más que un privilegio. Gabriel Negrón, por tu fe en Jesucristo como tu Salvador, te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Edgar ha sido una persona que ha creído en Jesucristo como salvador y, y tiene esa hambre por compartirlo. Y poder bautizarlo hoy en público, eso afirma su fe. Edgar Fermín, por tu confesión de fe en Jesucristo como tu salvador, yo te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Well, that's a wonderful thing to watch. My wife, the late Miss Wagner, is supposed to join me up here. I'll get in trouble for that, but it's okay. <laughs> She's going around. She'll join me soon. Yeah, um, you know, as pastor is leading us more and more in training and more and more things, maybe some of y'all have run across some things I've thought about, and that's we're doing all this, but I really don't know what it is I'm supposed to be doing. I mean, 
trained. I know I'm supposed to get trained. I know God's doing my heart. But, but I just haven't found that place where I'm supposed to fit in and go. And so there's a real effort that we're making to try to find places. Uh, you know, Jesus sent them out for two, and I'm convinced in twos, I'm convinced he did that for a reason. Because if they had to go by themselves, they might not have gone. But when they had a partner, they were willing to go. And so um, Sandy and I have been uh, kind of commissioned and kind of did it on our own and then told him about it after. But we have created and are going to start the second week of January a visitation program. Uh, this is something that we think that we need to do. And while it's been on our heart and a lot of you have individually gone out and been doing these things, we as a church have not really done well at this. And so we, we in, as part of establishing a more active adult ministries, are going to start visiting people, and we're going to initially do this to people in our church or families associated with our church till we see if we have, how our numbers work. But we're going to start trying to go out to nursing homes and going out to uh, hospice facilities and to individual homes. Where we need your help is we're not sure we know where all of our people are in that situation. We need you to tell us of people that you know that need our visitation. And what are we going to do there? We're going to go there and pray with them and visit with them. We would like to, those that are shut in, we want to at least once a month, if they want, to be able to go and share communion with them. Uh, we just have a lot of plans like that. We met last Wednesday night and had about 20 people come out saying they want to get involved in this kind of thing. What I need you to help me do. And I've lost it already. There it is. The Connect card on the back says prayer request. If you will write down needs visiting, the name of the individual and their address and phone number, we will get them on a list and start trying to make contact with them beginning the second week of January. Please help us with that. We don't know that we know all of our church family and where they're at in that. In addition, Sandy will be standing out in front. There's a table out in the front that's all decorated with the red and green and bulbs and all, and Sandy has worn her green and red to match this morning, and she's going to be out there. And she has the forms for you to fill out if you want to be part of the visiting group. So come see us. We need, you, we need the information from you. We also need to know if you want to be part of our visiting group. There's some things we need to do preliminarily to get you involved in this but we really think it's an important thing that we need to do to our family. And for all of those that we go visit for the first time, we're going to have little gifts that we'll be able to take to them, a little prayer cross and a little package that we'll be putting something in. So we just, we're just we looking forward. We're excited. We want to get this going, and we want to give you an opportunity to go out in twos and visit with these people. Well, I'll tell you why we're having so many technical difficulties. Last Wednesday, we had uh, our Christmas banquet on a Wednesday night, and we had record attendance on Wednesday night, so give yourself a hand for that. We had tremendous attendance. We set out over 600 chairs, and we had to squish in and make room for everybody, and so we're real excited. And then we had a Christmas uh, play in here with the kids and we changed around a lot of sound settings and apparently I failed to get in here and make sure it was right so I apologize uh, however uh, we are I, I can use one hand to preach with and then I can just switch when I want to do that and uh, talk with my hands this morning we're going to continue talking about the advent I want to encourage the parents and families to be using the advent candles at home uh, that allow you the opportunity to have a devotion with your family and talk about the things that we've been talking about as well. This season, tis the season. We've talked about uh, really some things that the Holy Spirit's been talking to me about in the idea that there really 
it's an inside job. This is interior things in our lives. The very first one we talked about, hope. Well, hope is an inside job that it begins, and there's sometimes, based on circumstances and situations, that our hope begins to dissipate. But our hope doesn't come from those things which are external. It comes from the Holy Spirit, which is internal, so it's an inside job. And then we talked last week about joy, and Andy was here and preached half my sermon for me on joy and uh, the idea that we have a uh, inexpressible joy, a joy that's full of glory, a joy that uh, can rejoice even in the midst of trials and tribulations. Why? Because it's not dependent on circumstances or situations. It's an inside job. And today we're going to continue that, uh, talk about that inside job, and we're going to talk about peace. I want you to hear uh, the priestly prayer that Aaron and his sons would speak over Israel and the children of Israel. In fact, this priestly prayer was so important to God, God himself gave the prayer, the blessing to Moses, and had Moses give it to uh, the sons of Aaron. And so I want you to hear that it's a blessing, really more than a prayer, because of the context isn't in requesting, it's in declaring. You know, so often we wonder what uh, about declarations and where does that come from? Declarations come from God. And it's when you and I begin to get in agreement with what he's saying that we begin to speak boldly uh, because we're speaking out of the heart and mind of God. Well, this is what uh, God told Moses to speak to Aaron and his sons and to say over the children of Israel. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord Make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I want you to think about that. This idea that God wants us to know very early that there was a priestly blessing that wasn't a request, it wasn't a suggestion, it was a declaration from heaven. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This was the heart of God from the very beginning as he established the nation of Israel. And I want you to hear this morning that Jesus Christ came to fulfill this priestly blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. You know, the blessings of God became evident when Jesus Christ walked the earth. And in Matthew chapter 5, we read the Sermon on the Mount it is introduced. And Jesus stands up to this crowd and he begins to speak to me. He says, blessed are, and began to fill in the blank. Blessed are, and began to fill in the blank. And he spoke to people that didn't believe they were blessed. That didn't believe they were counted. Didn't believe that they were on the outside of the covering of God. They were sick and they were, they were poor and they were backwards and they were, I'm sorry, but many of them were female and they didn't count and many of them were not Israeli and they didn't count. And he said, you count and you are blessed because I am here. The priestly blessing began to be fulfilled with the audience of Jesus Christ. And they shall call his name Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and what? Prince of Peace. But what is peace and why is peace such an important part of it? Why does the countenance of God need to be lifted up upon our lives that we can see His face, that we may know peace? I want you to know because peace is and will always be an inside job. It's a part of your inner world, your inner sanctuary, the place where the Holy Spirit dwells within us. You and I were made of a three-part beings. We're three parts. We have our, our bodies, a physical part of who we are. We have our minds, our souls, the way we think and process. And then when we become believers in Jesus Christ, our spirit man becomes alive. And something begins to happen inside of us where the spirit man begins to take ownership and we begin to live by the spirit. See, before you were a believer in Jesus Christ, you lived according to your soul and your, your mind. You, you lived according to your desires. 
In fact, the Bible says we were dead in trespasses and sins, that the spirit within us did not live. But just as God breathed in the Moses, uh, into Adam rather, uh, life, Jesus breathes into us at the moment we say yes to him and we become spiritually alive. And for the first time, we begin this journey of learning to live by the Spirit. See, we believe sometimes we, we get bad theology and we think it's just supposed to happen because we became a Christian. I want you to know that there's a process where we partner with God on what He's doing on the inside of us. It doesn't just happen to us. God doesn't just sprinkle a fairy dust on us to watch us change. He says, you are different on the inside. Now I want you to learn how to live differently. I want you to learn how to live by the Spirit of God. And one of the fruits of the Spirit, the evidence of His presence in our lives is peace. In fact, Jesus says that His peace He gives to us, not as the world gives does He give, but He gives us a peace that will not leave us or forsake us. In John 14, Jesus is preparing to leave, and in verse 27, it talks about this special peace that comes from God. There's a peace that only Jesus Christ can give. It's not based in circumstances or situations. It's based in the character and nature of God. And he says, I'm giving you my peace. I want you to know that to this morning, one of the great gifts of the presence of God, the great gifts of Christmas is peace. Peace. Peace that passes understanding. Peace that no one can describe, that can't be shaken. And we don't understand it many times because our peace leaves us so often. How many times does our peace seemingly fly out the window of our lives? The debt collector calls, our peace flutters away. Uh, the, uh, the doctor says a bad prognosis, a bad diagnosis, and our, and our peace flutters away. And we watch our peace and we let the stresses of life that are external invade our inner world. Because we haven't learned what it means to have peace as a commodity, not an idea. That peace is something that belongs to us. It is, it is part of the atonement. It is, in fact, the very nature and character of God. How could Jesus take his pillow in the midst of a storm on a boat? He went. Jesus knows all things. He's, he's, he's aware of what God's doing. He's aware of all the things going on. And he steps into a boat in the middle of knowing he's going in the middle of a storm. And he carries his pillow. In fact, he's sleeping on a pillow. You remember the sermon when you can bring your pillow into your storm? You are more than a conqueror. He brings his pillow into his storm and the people around him are going, what are you doing? Don't you care? Why are you asleep? We're going to die here. Jesus had an abiding peace that circumstances, weather didn't shake. I want to tap into that peace. I want to realize a promise that I have from heaven. You and I have the Prince of Peace living within us. Why do we give away our peace? Because we don't understand it many times. In fact, Jesus said in, in uh, John 16, 33, uh, 33, In this world you will have what? Trouble, tribulations, trials. You can bet on it. But he said, but y y I, I have given you what? Peace. I say this that you may have peace. Peace, because your situation, your trial, your trouble doesn't get to steal your peace. Your peace belongs to you. Why are you giving it away? That's what he's telling us. I'm telling you ahead of time that it's not on the outside, it's on the inside. Jesus. In fact, if you'll turn to Ephesians, as a matter of fact, turn with me there. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Jesus is our peace. I want you to write that down somewhere. Uh, you can write that down if you have a pen. If you don't, you can prick your neighbor's finger and maybe write it. As a, no, don't do that. They already think we're weird sometimes. Those people out there, you know. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. Listen to what it says. It'd help if I could see it. For he himself is our peace who has made us both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. For he himself is our peace. Who is your peace? Well, why are you worried about what DuPont's doing? Who is your peace? What does it matter what the Dow Jones did last week? Who is your peace? Jesus. Well, why does it matter how your teenagers acted? Who is your peace? 
Well, why does it matter what your spouse says? Or the people that speak negatively about you. Hopefully that's not your spouse. (laughs) Hopefully that's other people. Why do we give it away so quickly when it says Jesus, for he himself is our peace? It says, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making what? Peace. And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting death to the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and those of you who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. By him, through him, because of him, we have peace. We have peace no matter the storm, no matter the trial, no matter the tribulation. Because peace is the capacity to live in any disturbance free from fear and anxiety and stress. Peace is the ability to live in any environment free of the disturbances of fear, anxiety, and stress. Now that's not just a good idea, that's the promise of God over your life. Now you and I are called to have the authority and the identity in Christ that we can take every thought captive that exalts itself against the truth of Jesus. So when those things come into our lives, when those thoughts, when those stressful ideas come in, you have the ability as a child of God to go, no, I'm going to take that one captive. And in fact, I'm not only going to arrest it, but I'm going to break it with praise. And I'm going to replace what I've broken. So what I'll do is, you know, something will come in and, I feel that little stressometer starting to go to, into the red, that little that high area. And I go, wait a minute, I don't want that. So in fact, I'm going to say no to that. That's not mine. I have peace. In fact, I thank you that no matter what trial or tribulation may come, my peace is in you because I'm an overcomer because you have overcome the world. And Father, I just want to begin to celebrate that nothing brought against me can beat me because greater is he that is in me than he that's in this world. And begin, suddenly, we begin, see that? Do you see, suddenly we begin to replace it with praise. And the enemy has no, has no recourse to the praise of God. You want to send the enemy running? Start praising Jesus. You want to see the enemy getting frustrated and uh, turning and uh, infighting with himself and other of his his demons and dominion areas? You begin to praise God and suddenly you see that house that's divided against itself begin to fight and fall. Because we know who we are. And we know in whom we've trusted. And we know that him in whom we've trusted will finish what he has started in our lives. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. You and I have been called the children of God. In fact, if you look in Numbers, it goes on and tells them to speak this over the children of God, the children of Israel. You and I are the children of God because of Jesus Christ. It has been fulfilled and give them peace. It's a gift. Open it up. Unwrap it. Own it. And now how do we do this? It's my contention that rest and peace go together. The Bible says peace, be still. In fact, if you think about resting, for me resting is something God established very early. In Genesis chapter 2, I believe it's around verse 6, it says that Jesus, uh, God created, and then on the seventh day after he had created everything, he rested. He made the Sabbath, and we get confused about the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a day of rest. And because we rest, the Bible, uh, Jesus said man was not created for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was created for man. Uh, man wasn't created for a day of rest, but the day of rest was created because of man's need. You know, the Bible says that you and I are seated with Christ in heavenly places. You know, just sitting down feels good. My old legs get tired sometimes. You ever get tired? 
rest. Sit down and rest. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. Learn from me, he says. Take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And I'll give you rest for your souls. See, the place of rest is the place of peace. You can't fight sitting down very well, can you? And so often we will not rest, we strive. We strive for people's attention. We strive for people's approval. We strive to be accepted. And suddenly we begin to strive that God will approve of us. That God, we have his attention. See me. Here I am. I'm important. I'm hurting. Don't you see me? And we begin to live not in a place of rest, but in a place of striving. You cannot strive and have peace at the same time. There's a discipline of rest where we learn to sit down because it's an inner thing not an outward thing it's not based on what we can accomplish but it's based in who we are in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 it tells us that we are seated with him in heavenly places what do you think Jesus is doing right now he's seated in heavenly places aren't you so glad it doesn't say God uh, uh, he ascended into heaven he is pacing before the throne wringing his hands trying to figure out what in the world the devil's up to Aren't you so thankful that he led captivity captive? He ascended, but what does it mean that he ascended? That he first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He took the keys of death, hell, and the grave from the devil himself. He said, give me back what is mine. He led captivity captive. He gave gifts to men, and he sent it on high and sat at the right hand of the Father. Or he will be forevermore. And we act like Jesus is a little Jewish guy going, oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know what to do. I, I, oh, oh, my, oh, oh. We don't, we, don't, we don't serve. We're not a part of a family of a schizophrenic God who can't decide is he happy or sad, is he in a good mood or a bad mood, is he ready to smite you or hug you. We serve a good God who has walked in victory, who is always triumphant, who is set down at the right hand of the Father and said, come and sit with me. Know my peace. Take a load off and get some rest. You know, we'll tell dead people rest in peace. Think about it. Why are you giving a dead person your gift? May he rest in peace. I don't know what's going on at that point, but he's, he's in a good position or a bad position. What we say at this point really doesn't matter. Is that true or not? I got one amen. You know, there's no praying for the dead. They either know peace or they don't know peace. It's over at that point. So why are we giving them our peace? Oh, may they rest in peace. No, you need to look at the spouse, the children, and say, you can rest in peace. Because it's not about the situation or the circumstance. I'm telling you, when Jesus said, my peace I give with you, this means, listen, no matter what circumstance comes your way, no matter what doctor report, no matter what employment figure, no matter what your banker or your investment guy says, no matter what goes on, God has said, my peace I give to you, which means no matter what circumstance or situation, God has a peace made just for that. And you can have it. When I was in school, I'm going to tell you all some things that you can't judge me for. But I didn't always do my work on time. And, and because of this, I developed a habit of doing things at the last minute. Anybody have any of that gift of procrastination out there? Okay, my people's. Mary Beth is not a procrastinator. I was. Notice I said was, not am. I was. I'm not claiming that. And so, I'll talk with you later. She said hallelujah. Well, because I always was doing stuff at the last minute, my mother-in-law one time wrote a paper for me. 
Well, she didn't really write it. She typed it, which means she wrote it. Because I was running late getting the paper in, and I started saying, okay, can you type this for me? Because if I type, I hunt and peck, and she can really fly through the keys. And so I start telling her what I want her to write. I'm like a boss dictating. I'm having, this is the greatest thing I've ever experienced in college. I'm going, well, I think you should say, blah, 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 blah. I'm telling her all this stuff. So finally, and this is old school typewriter stuff. This isn't word processing. It's the old school. We, she pulls the paper out. She hands it to me. And she said, here, read over it. See how it sounds. I read it. I said, man, this is great. I don't remember saying any of this. <laughs> But this is a great paper. I made a 99 on it. I had to share my grade with my mother-in-law. So I have a good mother-in-law. But see, that stuff went on so often in my life where I wait to the last minute that at times I still have nightmares that I wake up and it's the last day of college and I don't have my work done yet. And y'all are about to find out that I haven't graduated. And I'm in my underwear at to boot. Now, erase that mental picture. That kind of makes some people nauseated. But I'm just completely unclothed and uh, not ready. And you see what happens when we believe that you and I can stand on our own authority. We are naked and unworthy. But when we begin to live in His peace, I can stand not because of what I've done, but because of what He's done. And I don't have to be afraid of what I can accomplish or haven't prepared for. I can know that no matter what comes my way, no matter what circumstance or situation, God has appointed His peace for that purpose. And so now, I don't have to have that nightmare anymore. I don't have to have that dream. I don't, I don't worry anymore about whether I'm qualified or am I able or what will people will think. I'm able to stand now in the presence and peace of God because it's never been about me in the first place. It's always been about Him and it will always be about Him. Amen? Which means that you and I can sit in a place of rest. You know what? Not all of us will have a great job. Not everybody in this room makes six figures. As a matter of fact, most people in this room do not make six figures. Most people in this room aren't even close to six figures. But if six figures gave us our peace, my goodness, we're in trouble. So I'm telling you, your peace can't be in your checking account. Your peace can't be in other people's opinions. Your peace has a foundation and it's resting in the presence and nature and character of God. And when you can sit down and recognize that you're spiritually seated someplace, you just need to get your body and mind in, in, in gear. Because remember when I told you earlier we were born with three parts and we're learning to be spirit-led because we've been soulishly led our whole lives? That there's a war that the enemy can do, and the only place he can try to beat you is in your mind. And it's a battlefield of the mind. In fact, there's a book right, called The Battlefield of the Mind. And, and what the enemy tries to do is he tries you to get up out of your place of peace, out of your place of rest. And all he can do is plant enough thoughts to where if you will grab a hold of it, if you will choose to let your inner world be disturbed, that's the only way you'll lose it. It's your choice. And here's the thing. It's always been our choice. We just didn't know it. And today I want to tell you, you have been given a peace that you are free. I want you to hear this. Because of Christ, you are free from anxiety, from stress, from worry, from depression, from guilt. You are free from everything that the enemy has ever written against you. You are free from every ounce of shame and rejection that's been spoken over you. You are free and in this place has been given the spirit of peace. Why? Because Jesus made a peace with you. After having reconciled us to himself, he sat down with the Father. And to us, he says today, peace be still. So I want to encourage you this way this morning. That if you will begin to allow the rest of God, if you will make the habit of rest a part of your life. If you'll stop striving. 
If you'll stop trying to figure everything out. If you'll stop, stop depending on other people's decisions and ideas for your peace. You and I will begin to walk in our inheritance. I'm not telling you trouble will not come. And I'm not telling you there will not be things in your life that other people outside the kingdom wouldn't be stressed out about. But I believe this with all my heart. And I do not mean it judgmentally. I want you to hear it because I, I want to say this in a loving way. The only way peace can be stolen from us is for us to step outside the kingdom. Now, I want to tell you, I've stepped outside the kingdom before. So I'm not saying shame on you or you're bad because of it or you're a failure. I'm just saying, let's always go back to what Christ says about us, not what the world says. Let's always go back to what Christ has appropriated for us, not what the world has appropriated. In this world, you will have trouble. But Jesus has overcome this world that you may have peace. Peace that flows like a river. Peace that has no end. Peace that other people or circumstances can't steal or destroy. Peace. I'd like you to close your eyes for just a second. Take you a real deep breath in and let it out. And I just want you to think this morning. Do I live in the peace of God? Am I able to rest in the assurance that everything's going to be okay because I'm in His hand? Do I rest daily in the knowledge that He holds me in the palm of His hand and nothing can snatch me away? Do I rest in His love today? Christ calls us again. If you're here today and you're weary, if you're here today and you feel weighed down by troubles, He calls to us again. I want you to hear His words. Come to me. Come to me. All of you. Who labor. The spirit beckons you this morning. To come to him. If you labor and you strive. And you strive for his love today. Choose rest. If you strive today. Because you feel heavy laden. With the, with the stress of this world. With holding your house together. With, with you being the reason for peace in the home. Today. He gives you rest. He gives you a reprieve from it and says, you don't have to. He says, if you will replace the burden you've been carrying with the identity, identity that he's given you. There's a yoke of his love that fits you well. Let him clothe you. I want you just kind of to imagine... Imagination isn't our enemy. It's a gift from God, so don't freak out. With your eyes closed, I want you to imagine the yoke of love being placed on you by the Father. And the Father is coming to you in His goodness and His mercy and His acceptance, no matter what you've done wrong. And He's taking love and He's, he's making a yoke out of it that fits you perfectly. He's landed upon your shoulders. He loves you. And I want you to begin to think about what it would be like to rest every day in the embrace of a father knitting your life together. And saying, take my yoke upon you. Learn to live through me. Learn to live out of my love. Rest in my love. Your performance doesn't matter to God anymore. It's His love for you that matters. Will you rest in His love? Will you take time to rest? As He embraces you with love and acceptance, will you rest in His love? Will you learn from Him how much He loves you, how valuable you are to Him? 
for you rest in his love. Listen to what he says. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. A prerequisite for peace is rest. And today I just want you to rest for a moment. It's not about whether or not we can feel God's presence. You know what? We get caught up in that so many times that I feel His presence or not. The Prince of Peace lives within you. Whether you feel it or not is irrelevant. That's icing on the cake of life. Your identity doesn't change because you feel His presence more. Your identity is what it is because of the sacrifice Christ made and appropriated into your life. Our feelings are the wonderful parts that we get to bring into alignment with who we are. Let His love cover you today. Let Him wash away the sins. and Because that's not your yoke. That wasn't made for you. The days of regret, the, the things that you look at and you're ashamed of, that yoke wasn't designed for you. Let's knock that off. The enemy designed a yoke over your life that was painful. And it was a bad burden to carry. And when you carried it, it screamed out shame. It screamed out disappointment. It screamed out rejection. Everyone who saw it, when you looked in the mirror, you saw it. And today, that yoke is broken. Because the one who is gentle and lowly at heart has embraced you with a gentleness and a love. Oh, you who are weary and heavy laden. You who have ran and who have hidden. All who are broken and have been rejected. Come. Come and learn from me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Father, we come to you this morning. And I ask, Father, that you will help us to rest in your presence so that we may know your peace. And, Father, that your rest will cause us to live a life free of panic and fear. That we'll be able to rest in you and your presence every day. And that we can rest in your presence because we rest in your love and your kindness. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're so kind and gentle. I thank you that when we've done wrong, you gently bring us back. And today, Father, there's been lies spoken over some of the people in this room. They've been told they weren't good enough. They've been told... They've been told by voices that hear so much like their own that they should be ashamed. And today, Father, they need rest. So I ask, Holy Spirit, that you will begin to give them rest. And I want to call, Father, the ones home that you won't call home. And so this morning, while you're resting that with your eyes closed and your heads bowed, if you're here this morning... And this is good news for you that that rest is available to you. That you've been running too long. You haven't known God or you've been running from Him and you've been avoided. But today, you just want to rest in Him again. You want to quit striving. Fear and shame no longer have dominion over you. Will you give your life to Christ? Will you come home? If that's you this morning, will you raise your hand? Yes, ma'am. Just raise your hand for me so I can see it. Yes. Yes. He's calling you. Will you raise your hand? Yes. Yes. Well, Father, with these hands that are raised, I want to declare life over them, rest for them, that they will know you and the peace of God will invade them like never before, that they will feel your goodness and mercy over them, and they'll be clothed in your presence. Father, that as they give their lives and rededicate themselves to you this morning, that they walk fresh and anew. Shame has been broken. The yoke of bondage has been broken off them. And they walk in newness of life. Father, I thank you for that in Jesus' name.
Now, church, let's stand to our feet. Prayer partners, will you make your way forward? There are those that raise their hands, and today you walk in victory. Today you walk with a new identity. Today you are fresh and new, and there's a brand new yoke of His love being made special for you. If you're here today and you just need prayer, these prayer partners are here for you to speak over your life and to encourage you. If you raised your hand for prayer or if you need to, will you make your way to these prayer partners and just say, the Holy Spirit's talking to me this morning. I, I, wanna, I want someone to know that He's making me new, that I'm going to walk in His peace. And in just a moment, we'll be dismissed and allowed to go. And guys, I just want to thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness as God begins to pour out His love. Father, we thank you this morning that people will respond to your goodness and your mercy. And we thank you that your goodness leads us to repentance so that we can come to you and find the help we need. Lord, we love you and we worship you. Let's lift up our voices and begin to worship him this morning. You're the name above all names. And you are worthy of all praise. And my heart will see. And how great is our God, name above, is the name above all names, and you are worthy of all praise, and my heart will see. And how great is our God. And how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And so we'll see how great. How great is our God, and how great, and how great is our God, and sing with me how great is our God, then all will see how great, and how great. Don't we serve a great God? God is so good to us. Let me pray over you and bless you as you go about your week that you be overwhelmed with peace in all that you do. Father, thank you so much for every person here, small and tall, the young and the young at heart, Father. Lord, we ask that you would bless them this week because you are good and you have great things for us that your peace would overwhelm and reside within our spirits. Bless us this week. In your name I pray. Amen. Just want to encourage you on your way out. If you're new here and you have a Connect card, you can come see either I or Pastor Dan, and we'll get with you at the table. We have something for you. Have a blessed week. You're the name of
So 
this life is over, I'll fly away.